Welcome back guys, it's Israel. Have you guys been working in Docker recently? Well, here is one easy way to boost the security of your Docker images. But first, I wanna give a shout out to all my channel members. If you guys wanna see your name here, as well as get access to whatever code from any video on my channel, click the link in the description or join button on my profile, then send an email to this email with the code you want access to. But now, onto the video. All right guys, so we are now at the project. I have a .NET 8 API here. I'm just gonna run it really quick so you guys can see what it looks like when it's running. It's just an API with a few endpoints, so it's just gonna look something like this, but I want to show you guys so that you guys can see whenever we're actually running the Docker file in a container, you guys know what to look for, but that's not why you're here. Let's go and check out the Docker file. So I have this basic Docker file right here. We have our build at the top. Uh, we're setting the work directly to app. We are copying over our Docker Compose API project file. So uh, my Docker file is at the level of the solution. So I have my solution here and my Docker file here. So I'm copying this over, restoring, building and then uh we're here we're still setting the user to app red flag um and then we are exposing these two ports and then we are publishing so if i go through here uh we could run this right now it should compile fine and we have that but that's not why we're here so when you attempt to deploy your docker image to a container in kubernetes any orchestrator or docker itself or at your job. They're probably gonna wanna run some type of basic security check on your container images. And one of the easiest things that get flagged is not running your Docker container on a non-root port, as well as with a non-root user. Luckily, those are two things that are easily fixable with just a few lines of code in your Docker file. So let's dive a little bit more into that. So for a non-root port, the basics are that it just has to be a port greater than 1024. Ports less than that require root privileges and are very common ports, so usually just go high. So for our example here, we have 8080 and 8081. They're great. We would have a problem if this was 80, we would have to change that. So wherever in your file that you're just exposing a port, just make sure it's higher than 1024 and you'll be good to go and you're taking care of that requisite. So now we're going to move along to a non-root user. This is also best practice and you should stay away from very common names such as a uh, root or admin or app. Things like these are very common and easy to guess. And why is it very bad if someone can easily guess your username? Well, that's because if the container is compromised, the attacker is going to have host level access to everything in the container. So let's just say in the event that, you know, your non-root user gets guessed, right? At that point, they're not going to have host level access. They're going to have some type of restricted access because you've specifically created this user for this thing. So it's just a little bit safer and you're going to be limiting damage and make sure to also actually set the user somewhere. Otherwise, the Docker file will default to a root user. But now enough talk, let's actually add in these lines to actually set a non-root user. All right, so I've gone ahead and changed the Docker file now and let me explain what I did. So really what I did is I went in here and we did a few things. So we're running the command run group add. We're doing a GID, so a group ID of 1000. We're gonna call this group API user and a user add. So we're creating a user with a user ID of 1000 and we're assigning them to the group and we're gonna call them API user as well. So that is the full command where we're creating a group as well as a user. And let me explain more what a group and users even are. So in this setting, when we're talking about groups, it is a group of users that have very certain permissions and access to certain files or directories. And we're able to easily control access for all of these people at once. So in the Linux operating system, the use of IDs is then internally mapped two string names for users. So this would get mapped to this, uh, this one gets mapped to this one, and then this ID would get mapped to this ID. So you would know that this user is equal to this, and then this ID is in here. And these IDs are then used for managing permissions and access to files, like I mentioned earlier. Users can be members of multiple groups as well. And then moving down here, we kept the same exposed ports because that was good. They were already non-root ports. And then moving down here, we changed the directory to app. And then after the work directory, we get to our user command, where this API user is the name of the non-root user that we created. So we are stating this here. We're not using any defaults. We're not using any root uh, users. We are using the non-root user that we created here, and we stated it here. Now, the next step is that we need to give this user 
the permissions and the ownership of the files in app. And to do that, you do this in the copy command. So you do the change ownership command, and then you do the username and then the group. And once you do this, you're good to go. You've changed the ownership. And now we're correctly using this non root user for our Docker image. And with that being said, that is all that you need to do to actually run on a non root port as well as a non root user. But now let's go ahead and test and make sure that everything inside the Docker container gets created correctly. And we are using this non root user. But right before we do that, if you guys have found this video helpful, please drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the other amazing content that I have for you guys. But now that we have all these changes, let's go ahead and build this. So we're going to build it and then we're actually going to create a container with that Docker image. So we're going to run Docker build dash T Docker compose API dot. Now that it finished building, I have Docker desktop running. So we should be able to see the container I'm about to create. So we should be able to run Docker run on port 8080 because that's one of the ones that we're exposing here and we should be able to run that image. So we're doing this. We see that it is now listening. We open the container here and we now click this. It's going to open up localhost and now I'm just going to move it over here. And I'm going to do this and do swagger just so you guys can see. This is the exact same thing that we were going to see when I initially ran in Visual Studio as a project. So everything is running great in the container. And now let's verify that we have our ports as well as our created user. And to do that, we can do it like this. So to actually verify that the user assigned to this container is our non root user, you can do this. Make sure that your container is still running like I have mine right here. Then you can open up a command prompt and you can do the following. So you can just check Docker PS and you should be able to see that your Docker compose image is still there and that it was created about a minute ago because that's when we did the build. And you can see here that it's also right here attached to this container. So now the next command that you're going to run is this. So Docker exec and then you can do uh, the name of the container which in this one is peaceful Perlman and then you can do who am I and with that command we're getting API user API user is the user that we're here and that's essentially checking what the user is that's attached to that container and you can also if you go in here I believe go to inspect you should be able to scroll down in here and also check that we see the user here and we see that our ports are good to go but that's how easy it is, guys, to add a non-root port as well as non-root user to your Docker file so you get rid of that little basic security issue. And if you want to learn how to deploy your Docker images to a container registry in Azure, watch this video right here.